Alright guys, um, this video is a bit overdue, but we're going to be showing you how to attach the stock of your snap boat today. Now I do this in a, quite a different way than I've seen many people do it, and uh, it actually is a mechanically fastened slash adhesive combo, um, and I'll get into that more in a minute, but we'll first we'll go over the uh, extra materials that you'll need for your stock. You will need, I believe this is, let me take a look and see what size this is. This is three quarter inch wooden dowel. Uh, I use poplar usually, but you can use oak or anything else. Poplar is just the cheapest, and it uh, usually comes out pretty good. It's usually pretty strong. Uh, now you need some three-quarter inch PVC. Um, you'll really only need about maybe like six, seven inches of this. So this is just a piece I had laying around. You're going to need a PVC 45. This is half inch, and you're going to need a PVC 90 degree. This is also half inch. You're also going to need three. 632 flathead 3 8 long bolts. There's three of those. And I believe you're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 of these pan head number 6 sheet metal screws that are half inch long. Now these are to attach all these things to your stock wood and everything else. All right, get that out of the way. Now what we're gonna need for tools, or we're gonna need our power drill once again, our Dremel with a few bits, including a sanding bit and a cutting bit. We're also gonna need a 3 8 drill bit. We're gonna need our half inch countersink bit that I've mentioned before, that we use for all the other parts of the snap, mostly. We're going to need a 764 drill bit like we've been using for all of our holes. And you're going to need, again, our trusty little 16th inch drill bit for uh, all our pilots. Now, you're going to need E tape. I can't believe I couldn't remember what that is that called for a second. Either super glue or plastic welder, which is a DEVCON plastic epoxy, a two part epoxy. Um, this plastic welder is about $6 at Ace, I believe, and it's very, very strong when the surfaces are properly um, sanded. And speaking of sanding, you're also going to need a small piece of sandpaper, uh, probably a rough grit and a finer grit. Um, super glue is optional in case you don't want to use this. You're going to need hot glue, which I have over here. And uh, something you're going to need something to be able to cut your wood dowel fairly straight. I'm going to go out there now and I'm going to cut it on my chop saw. Um, and I'll tell you guys the links is when I get back. And I'll also go ahead and cut this piece of PVC. This piece of PVC, by the way, is going to be five and five eighths inches from a flat end cut on a 45. I'll show you guys what I mean when I get back. All right, guys, well, I went out to the saw and I cut my wood pieces and my uh, angle piece. Now, what I said before is from here to here, from the pointy end to this is five and five eighths inches. And uh, in a second, I'm gonna show you guys uh, how we're going to mark out this and so we can drill pre-drill a hole before we attach it to the blaster. Now. This piece here is going to be the back plate of our stock. It is four and a half inches long. Um, again, three quarter inch thick poplar. And this one is 15 and a half inches long. This should give you a little extra room for your hand and uh, still provide a decent stock length for most, most uh, builds. Uh, I sometimes use a little longer one for myself, but uh, again, that's all personal preference. You're just gonna to have to measure it but, uh, and uh, decide what you want. But I would start with 15 and a half. It's a pretty standard length. Um, I also forgot to mention you're going to need one of your three-sided rulers like we've been using most of the time and a sharpie. And uh, now I'm going to cut the video here and I'm going to clean up some of the rough edges that you can see this got from me cutting it. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and start showing you guys what the measurements are that we're going to mark the top of this at. All right, guys, now that I cleaned out this a little bit because my saw type took to chew in a little bit to it, um, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to mark this. And now we're going to take our three-sided ruler real quick. And we're going to center it along this. Think of the point here as a center line down the middle. And I'm going to make a center line mark on it. Get a good eyeball on this real quick. That's a little off. Sometimes even I screw up, right? Yep. Okay, so we just wanted a center line down here, and I messed up. Uh, so just ignore that, but uh, we're going to start making marks from the back forward, and we need a mark at 3 eighths from the back, 
So, one, two, three, three eighths. We need a mark. Let me get a flip the ruler around actually, so I can get a good measurement on this. Mark it three eighths, one and three eighths. So one, one, two, three. One more right there. We need a mark at two and three eighths. Two, one, two, three. Right there. Let me make sure I'm marking it right. And uh, three. Let me see if I'm writing this down correctly. And three and one, two, three, four, five eighths. Let me, let me take a look at my snap bow that I've got here by me and make sure that all looks all right. Okay, we got a three eighths mark. We got a, let me, man guys, I'm out of it tonight. We need a three eighths mark. We need a one and three eighths mark. We need a two and three eighths mark. I'm going to actually grab this snap over quick and I'll be right back with you guys in a second. Alright guys, now that I kind of screwed up in the middle of the video, but um, I've got the measurements in my head now. We've got a 3 8, a 1 and 3 8, a 2 and 3 8, a 3, which I was mix missing before, and a 3 and 5 8. Now, okay, now that we've all got all these marks down our center line, the uh, 3 8 hole here, the Oh, sorry guys. Two and three eighths mark here, and the three and five eighths mark here are all going to get uh, drilled out bigger. But um, first, we're going to go ahead and take our drill here and chuck in our sixteenth inch drill bit. Let me grab that from over here on the side real quick. And we're just going to pop small pilot holes again in all of our holes. Always be careful, wear your safety glasses. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Blow all the dust out. And now we're going to widen all these holes out to 764s real quick. All right, so one, two, three, four. All right, make sure it's centered, and it is. And now we're going to go ahead and attach it to the blaster. I only like to pre-drill it because it's easier when it's off. But uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, attach it to our blaster. All right, guys. Now what we're going to do, need to do first is we're going to need to decide which side we're going to need to offset the stock on so that we can uh, decide where the stock's going to be placed. But uh, first we need to decide whether you're right-handed or you're left-handed. And I hope you guys would know that by now. If you are right-handed, you're going to want to take your stock and it's going to want to be offset to the left. That way it gets your face a little away from the plunger rod, and uh, just overall, it's just much nicer to use. If you're left-handed, you're going to offset to the to the right a bit to keep again keep your face out of the way. Now, right-handed means that you hold the blaster in your right hand. Now, left-handed, of course, means you hold the blaster in your left hand. Now, most people are going to be doing it this way to the left, which is for right-handed people. All the lefties out there will probably want to do it this way. Okay, I'm doing this one for a left-handed person, so I'm going to be doing it this way, but you can just reverse the direction if you're right-handed. I just want to make this very clear so nobody gets really confused. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to actually take our screwdriver and pop the screw out where the stock is going to be sitting. So we're going to take that out, and we will re-drill a hole whenever we get our stock mounted. This is just to get out of the way for now and then we'll move the hole down about an inch. Um, it will still provide plenty of support. It's still got three full screws in it, holding it in. So we're left with this. We're left with the screw missing on the side where our, where our stock mount's gonna rest. So what we need to do next is we need to sand it just real lightly with some rough grit sandpaper. This is just for adhesive purposes. Make sure that our epoxy takes place really well. Sand that. And we're going to sand the bottom of this piece. 
all around. Not all the way around where your Sharpie mark is, but get up the edges a little bit too. Now the sanding always helps because it lets the adhesive grab, on, grab onto the uh, surface better. All right, wipe off the excess dust off of both of these sanded parts. And you should be left with something like this. Now the way we're gonna mount this is, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but we're gonna mount it so the edge here is going to be fairly flush with the center line. It's kind of hard to explain, so let me pick up a snap that I have here so I can show you guys what I mean. This one is for a right-handed person. You see there how the actual, this side of the stock is pretty well centered for uh, just how it is. And you see how it's offset, so this side is directly against the middle, middle line. Uh, but we're going to be doing the reverse of this, so I'll just show you guys in a second. And we are going to go ahead and I'm going to mix up some epoxy and we're going to place this on there and then we're going to hold it for a little bit. Now when you place it on there, tilt it a little bit this way so your screws are going to be going straight down through and into your body. That's pretty important so you get a good solid mount. You're going to take these screws and you're going to offset them a little bit so that they're going to be going drilling straight into your body rather than at a weird angle here. Sort of hard to explain. Um, I'll show you guys as soon as I get a piece of epoxy mixed up and uh, we'll move on from there. It's epoxy time! Mixing time. <sighs> Alright, now it's time to actually place the epoxy before it dries. So we're going to place it along the bottom here. Place some all over. This DEFCON plastic welder is actually very nice stuff. It um it bonds plastics like insanely crazy. So that looks like a good bound on there. Alright. And we get this on our snap fairly quickly. And you see how we have the hole in the top of our snap? Go ahead and wipe it off where that hole is. I just need I needed to spread it on there real quick. So we're gonna wipe it off here. And again, I don't recommend using your finger for this, but that's what I have here right now. Um I'm trying to keep it all in frame, so there. Get all the excess off there and spread it towards the back. And uh, again, use one of my work towels and work shirt. <laughs> and we're going to place it on very quickly before it dries. And it'll ooze out a little bit, but that's okay. And now this is important. We need to make sure we get our stock good and lined up along with the center line. Make sure our holes are good and lined up. And that there is looking pretty excellent right now. Let's get a good look at it real quick before I show you guys. See that? That is looking freaking awesome right now. And I'm actually going to scrape the excess off here and apply a little more on the X side. But um, you can see what I mean by the offsetting. That's very important and that's one thing that you need to incorporate into your snap so you're not like cramming yourself in the face with it. So that's how you epoxy on and it make sure it's good and straight against this side with the center line and uh, make sure the screws are tilted a little bit so they go straight in the body this way and that's all there really is to it right now and I'm gonna get back to you guys whenever I move this epoxy around a little bit alright guys now that I've gave the epoxy a little time to dry and it's nice and solid on there you see up here how we have this obstructed now it's not a straight through hole anymore and we're gonna fix that with our Dremel and all you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the side of this PVC here it's easier to show you than tell you, so I'm just going to go ahead and start going at it. I'll probably speed this section up a little bit. Alright guys, this is pretty messy right now. I'm going to clean that up in a second. But now you can see, if you guys can see this, it's a straight pass through hole now. And that's so, when we need to remove our handle, we can get a screwdriver straight in there like so. See what I mean? Otherwise you'd be like this trying to get out screws and it'd be really awkward. Now this just lets you get a screwdriver straight down through the bottom. 
Now I'm going to clean this hole up with a knife and some other little pieces of sandpaper and clean myself up a little bit and then I'll be right back to you guys. Alright guys, now that I've got this hole cleaned up and my hot glue is already heating up, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how we're going to mechanically fasten the stock. So we're going to need our drill one more time with our 764 bit and we're going to drill uh, let me open this up a little bit. We're gonna, we're not gonna need our. Yes, we are gonna need our 764 bits. I'm kind of scatterbrained tonight. We're gonna need that chucked in, and now we're gonna take the internals out of our snap. We're gonna open up the back and then pull our spring and plunger head assembly out, just to keep it all nice and tidy, so we don't get any crap in there while we're doing this, or drill into anything we don't want to drill into. And uh, then we're gonna start drilling holes and getting proper screws uh, set in there. And it's really not all that, all that difficult, uh, but it does require some trimming. You're going to need a metal disc on your Dremel so you can tighten down the screws a little bit. Again, they don't really sell screws in the specific size nearby to me. I think that a quarter inch one would work, um, but I just take three eighths screws and cut them down a little bit. It's really not that difficult with a metal cutting bit. And uh, basically, we want a very flush inside. We want the screws to attach into the PVC pretty well. And I'm just about there. That just popped out. Let me get this last couple turns. My hands are um, actually a little messed up from doing all the HVAC work. Um, this past week, I've got pretty cut up hands um, all over. I've got little micro cuts everywhere from the sheet metal. And we're going to pull this out. Just pull your trigger and pull it straight out the back. It's a little dirty right now, but we'll clean that before we put it back in. And uh, here are the ones that we're going to drill. We're going to drill the one that is closest here. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that. And we're going to drill, try to drill it straight into the body. It's kind of do with my arm, hard to do with my arm extended like this. But go ahead and drill. And you see we're going to go straight into the body here. Like that. You get it closer to me so I can actually hold it. Alright, so we got one hole in the further, furthest one here. And we are going to skip a hole. We're going to skip the second hole and move on to the third one. And we're going to do the same thing and drill straight in the body here. Alright. Open up the second one. We're going to skip the third and we're going to go on to the very last one here again. And there's that one. All right, chuck that out, and now we are going to chuck in our three-eighths drill bit. Now we should really be clean. You guys should really clamp this down when you're doing this, because this drill bit will grab a hold of everything. But uh, I'm fairly skilled, so I can do it like by hand. Uh, we're gonna drill out the holes. The holes that we uh, we just put a drill in. We're gonna drill it in the farthest one here, like so. We're going to skip another hole and drill again in the same hole that we just drilled. Drill it again. And then we're going to get, again drill at the back hole here. Well, I made a mistake and actually went all the way through, but um, I'll fix that later by just popping another one here. Um, not that big of a deal. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. See, the drill bit actually grabbed and it went all the way into the inside. We didn't want that. My mistake, your gain, I guess. And we're going to go through, I'm just going to go through this secondary hole right here. Twist it by hand a little bit. And uh, I messed up a little bit, but it doesn't really hinder the look any. And I'll just put another small hole in this area when I get ready to fix the stock in there. But um, that's basically how it's going to work. Um, I, miss, I messed up a little bit, but uh, I just popped an extra hole and it'll be fine. But uh, let me get that out of the way. And um, there you go, and now we're going to deburr these holes real quick, like so. Alright, and then we're going to take our drill bit out. And we're going to take our half inch bit, uh, the one that I've been using for countersinking. Let me think how I actually did this last time. Let me think for a second, guys. I'm a little mess, messed up right now on uh, trying to think. I'm actually going to grab my smaller 3 8 countersink and try that. Alright. 
So instead of using the big bit, I'm going to use my small 3 8 countersink. You can use the half inch one. It will just enlarge these holes a little bit, but I'm going to use this one just because. So again, I messed up. I'm trying to build this right up from, uh, from memory and I can't remember everything. So we're going to countersink the one, the furthermost one. And you're going to countersink it just enough that a screw head will sink into it. And that looks pretty good. And uh, let me see where I want to put the next one. I'm going to put the next one in this hole here. Maybe drill a little harder on that one. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And instead of using the back one like I normally would, I'm going to move forward one. And that's looking pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish these off, and then I'll show you guys what we're going to do in a second. All right, guys, now that we got all that taken care of, we're going to move on, and we're going to take our tap, and we're going to tap the one, two, and the three, which should be here, the three holes that we've got that are made into the actual body of the snap. Now, I'm going to speed this up real quick so I can tap this and then I'll back them out and show you guys what we're going to do next. Alright, now that we got all three holes tapped, we're going to take our 6 8 inch, uh, I mean not 6 8, 3 8 inch, number 6, uh, 632 screws if I can find all three of them. Well, I've got two of them for now. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put those in the holes we've got in the body and then I'm going to show you guys what it looks like from behind. Again, I'll do another speed up right here. Alright guys, um, I've got all the screws screwed in. Let me clean out in here a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about when I show the camera. Uh, now the problem that we have now is we've got little tiny screw bits sticking inside. And how do we deal with little tiny screw bits? We cut them off. And you just want to get a good eyeball of what you need to cut off. Click my mouse. And then you're going to back out. I like to start up front usually. And uh, we're going to back it out and then we're going to cut a couple threads off. And then we're going to retest. Um, this is pretty important. You don't want anything sticking inside of your plunger tube for easy disassembly. And uh, I'm going to cut this one down, and then I will uh, definitely be switching over. Oop, move the camera. I will definitely be switching over and cutting it. That way, you guys don't have to sit here for like 15 minutes while I uh, while I cut them. Let me move the camera back real quick. That should be about where we were. Now we're going to hold the screw in a pair of pliers pretty tightly. That way it doesn't get any movement whatsoever. Because you do not want to be holding this while you're cutting it with your Dremel. Because it will get very, very hot very quickly. Uh, um, what I usually do is I keep a cup of water actually right on hand to dunk them in afterwards. But I'll go ahead and cut this. And then I'll show you guys about the link that we're looking for. And then uh, we're going to throw some sparks here. So guys, safety glasses again. <laughs> And that's why we want to use pliers for this. Or you can get quarter inch length pan heads, I mean flathead screws if you have access to them. And I just lost that one. Man, am I clumsy tonight. So I'll just grab another one out of here real quick. And I'm actually just going to speed this up so you guys don't have to watch me do all this. Alright guys, I got one in there now, and uh, I'm going to do the other two. I'm just going to cut real quick and skip on to the next segment. Alright guys, what I was trying to say before my camera ran out of battery was, um, I recommended you use a very good adhesive if that's all you're going to be using. Something like that uh, epoxy I showed you, excuse me, a burp again, plus uh, like maybe an epoxy, uh, 
putty right here. Um, but now we've got one, two, three, four screws in there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start attaching these bits and pieces on here so we get a stock that looks somewhat like this. And uh, how we're going to do that is we're going to take E-tape from where I showed you guys at the beginning, and we're going to wrap these parts until they fit just snug into these PVC parts. It's going to take a few wraps, so again, I'm going to speed this up real quick, guys. Alright guys, now that I have these all snug fit on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all these off and I'm going to make it 90 degree marks all the way around. Remember, there's uh, three 90 degrees in a circle, I believe, if I remember correctly. No, that's 270. My bad. <laughs> I suck at math. 120 degrees apart from each other on all these parts, and I'll show you guys how that looks real quick. Make a, take a Sharpie. And I like to put the uh, center mark back here on the back. About right there. And then I make another mark about there. And I make another mark about there. Basically what we're trying to do is we're making sure everything's straight before we do this. Because once you do this, you get holes and stuff. So it's uh, not very hard, not very easy to replace. Put a hole here. And again, you're about a quarter inch down. Uh, a hole about right there. My hands are really shaky tonight for some reason. And a hole about there. And we're going to also make some holes up top. I like to put one up top. About a quarter inch back or so. Um, one at... 120 degrees again and then another one at 120 degrees again and now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-drill all these holes with our 732nd or 764 bit I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick I actually need to change my bit because this one's really dull and going in the garbage you guys can stay again or uh, I'll speed it up real quick this time Alright guys, now that we have all the uh, connections made out back, I'm going to wipe this plunger head off and reinsert it into the plunger tube, and we'll get going from there in a second. That looks pretty clean, and we'll go ahead and pop it in here real quick. Remember pull your trigger, let me figure out where it's supposed to line up at. got the holes lined up and I'm gonna go ahead and pop these spring rest screws in and then we'll actually drill a new spring rest hole remember from the beginning where I had to take this out and uh, we kind of mounted the stock over top of it so there is 
one. There is two. If I can get it in there, my hands are a little... Like I said, guys, look how shaky my hands are tonight. I don't know why. Sometimes it just gets like that. Little personal fact from Nam. Oh, no. I can't get that in that for now. And one right there. Man, what is with me tonight? One in here. that one and let's see if I can get this one in here because I am just too shaky there it is and pop that one in there and then we're gonna drill and tap a new one and I will show you guys where that's at as soon as I get this one screwed in all right so we got three of the spring rest screws in there I'm gonna clean off my drill bit I'm gonna just drill I usually drill like right about here on the center line here or just a hair above it, pretty even with this one. So I'm gonna drill that in my hands and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. All right, well there's that. Let's tap that real quick. Another speed up real quick. Alright guys, now we've got our last screw port and we've got that other hole in there underneath all this hot glue for cosmetics and that's in there. And one more thing I like to do is I like to prime the blaster, if I get this handle around, there we go, prime the blaster and I like to actually pop a screw right around here behind the catch. Let me get it primed fully, there it goes. I'm not used to, to priming southpaw so it's a little awkward. So we're going to go here on this line here. And you should hit solid and compress spring. And then we're going to unchuck this drill bit and we're going to chuck in our 3 8 drill bit. And what this does is it allows for a good air pass so you don't get vacuum behind the plunger tube because I usually drill these pretty tight. And it, uh, it can actually increase your ranges if you do due to real tight tolerances. Clean that out. Let me get my deburring tool on it. And it's pretty cool because it lets you see the spring compression and uh, it also lets air flow in so it gets a better, usually better performance. And uh, and it turned out great, guys. Um, I'm going to sit in my chair for a second. I'm going to explain everything again. Alright, guys. By this point, you should have a snap with a very sturdy stock on it if you made it correctly. There might be a little wiggle room at the back, but um, it's really nothing to worry about. Uh, Snap, stock, mechanically fastened up front, not really super needed. Um, I just do it for longevity. Uh, mechanically fastened pieces at the back end. And uh, this one, again, remember is offset to the right for a lefty. And uh, most of you guys will be doing it on, over to the left side. And it's just the same process, just reversed on the other side, just a direct mirror. Now, I'm not southpaw, so uh, I don't think that's what it means if you're left-handed. Um, so I would be like this if I was left-handed. And I would actually have the foregrip up here in my hand. And then I would prime with my left hand and come back to the handle. So, I'm not southpaw, so this is really weird for me. Um, but see how it gets your face out of the way of the plunger rod? Um, let me grab one that's actually right-handed right here. I'm going to show you guys. Get your face away from the moving plunger rod here. And gives you a good line of sight down the blast rod, still protecting your face here. So, that is why we do that. Um, guys, I've got a bunch of other crap I'm working on this week. I finally, uh, I've got a little break from working HVAC, so I can work on more snap goodness, and I've got a bazillion things I'm doing, as always. I created a Facebook page recently, if you guys want to contact me, or talk, not contact me, but like talk to me, and I'll, I'll try to post regular pictures and video stuff of what I'm doing. Uh, I think that's it for this video, guys. I played with the lighting again. I've got an overhead light this time. Please let me know how that looks because I think it looks a lot better from what I've seen. So, nothing else going through my head right now. And uh, it took me a few hours to film this because my camera died a couple times. So, I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day wherever you're at.